this is the full 355 Holden motor that the car came out with, which we've done our tweaks with. Essentially, it is still the cast iron heads, cast iron block, Harrop crankshaft, um, with the aluminium intake manifold that it all started with, all being modified here to make it do what it does now. Um, in a quick run over of that sort of stuff, the block's got full machining, it's got four bolt mains on it, it's got O-ring grooves put in it, it's been basically race machined down the bottom end, all the assemblies all been race balanced, it runs scat rods, Aries pistons, um, the heads have had a fair bit of porting, there's stainless valves in them, two-piece uh, double valve springs, all in all bits and pieces to make a 355 start to go a bit better. Uh, the next thing on top, the intake manifold, it's been through several levels of modification, but that is uh, what essentially started off as one of the original, um, what was called the bunch of bananas, essentially aluminium intake manifold. This has been modified with both where the throttle body has been moved to the front, it's been enlarged to a 90mm throttle body, the upper runners have been cut off and turned into a plenum on the top of it, so essentially it runs a larger plenum with short runners to be able to run the sort of horsepower we want to get to. Other features are under the bonnet, are everything from, um, there's essentially a, another fuel line that goes in, there's one at the front, one at the rear, so essentially we have twin feeds to the two fuel lines once we start to make higher horsepower. Obviously you can see the intercooler pipe work that goes in through here, the T-trim supercharger, a crank support for the nose of the, for the engine, all the bits and pieces to essentially turn this thing into making you know, the high 600 rear wheel horsepower, which is the horsepower this car is making. So that's a, that's a brief overview of the under the bonnet. Um, coming back out to the, the outside features of the car, which are noticeable income, some cases not in others. If you look at the front of the bonnet, you'll notice they normally run straight through. There's a slight little modification we've done on here to actually fill up the gap that fits in between the bonnet and the nose clip something that I found noticeable and, and not something I liked on the VT. It's either trying to describe itself as much as possible with the large air-to-air -air intercooler that's in there. That's all trying to be as invisible as possible. Otherwise, this car uh, has there's lots of suspension, which we'll go through and have a brief look underneath when we put on the hoist. But otherwise, we've put the, the 20 inch wheels on. And probably the only noticeable feature that comes out of that is the rear wheels are a 20 by 10 running a 285 tyre which don't really fit in the back of one of these cars so it's a fair bit of modifying to get that whole thing in there otherwise we, it runs essentially where we filled out the exhaust outlets with a full twin three and a half inch tips just getting the thing to look pretty much as i think one of these vts should have come out from the factory um, obviously with much workshop improvements to it so next we'll do is we'll put it on the hoist and we'll have a quick look underneath and then we'll get it on the dyno so we can actually see where our latest improvements have taken it to and we'll also do a bit of road test work so you can actually see what the car drives like. Okay, well while we've got it halfway up, we'll just have a go through. There's, um, car, this car is the GTS, the premium brake package um, with the Harrop brakes on there. You can see we've also changed over to a full, uh, that's a full um, custom strut running a Bilstein insert with Ibark springs and the keeper spring on there as well. Um, and the rear of the car, as you can see, we're running the, um, the Bilstein rear shock. You can also see the fuel system and the level spring um, from in through the wheels there. And we'll keep going up so you can see the rest of what's actually happening. Okay, well under here we've got the, essentially the, those twin three and a half inch tips that go onto a full um, custom three inch exhaust system in this car. As I mentioned, we've got the Bilstein shocks, um, the heavy duty level springs. It's also, car, this car also actually, we fitted the tailwind adjusters to the back of them. They didn't come out on the VT models, but we've actually custom grafted it in. So it's all a little different. We're still using the same component. Um, these cars also came out with the Hydratrack diff. That's been removed and we've put a tree track with three nine diff gears in there and then upgraded all our half shafts and basically been through the diff. Um, and the other part of that upgrade included Nola throwing through all the front and rear K-frame mounts at the back here. 
Um, the other thing that's obviously noticeable is this big fuel system. This is the fuel system we put um, in various forms in the back of the Commodores, twin 044 pumps and the three litre swell pot to make sure we're feeding the, the horsepower properly. This car has an extra fuel lines in it. Um, and as I said, it has a custom twin three inch exhaust system. That's actually probably the main feature about it, apart from you know what you can almost buy off the shelf nowadays, is it has a full twin um, 14 inch long merge that's in there to actually give us the best balancing we can. We come up, we've got the, the bullet caps we run on most things nowadays. And the other feature about this is it has custom, very short inch and seven eight um, headers that come that come to a very early collector and then into our three inch exhaust system, all suited for the sort of horsepower we're looking at with this car. Other features you can't see, the clutch has been modified, the bucket clutch has been removed and uh, aluminium flywheel with a normally he normal heavy duty ceramic clutch plates put in there. Otherwise there's the, the high energy sump, um, oil cooler, we actually have a separate oil cooler tucked up inside here. You can't see from underneath here, but that's an oil cooler, separate one for the supercharger. And over on this side, we have a large air cleaner system all tucked away up inside there. But that's a quick underview of what this car is. We'll get it down from here and then we'll put on the dyno and go through and, and do a horsepower run. <laughs> You can see we're actually running our full power on our um, run with full traction. We had a little bit of slip to start off with with cold tyres, but essentially our full power was just under the 680 rear wheel horsepower, running right on the sort of mixtures we want to see in the 12.7s. Um, and over the full boost we're running over on the other side here, we actually show where we're actually just running on 16 pounds of boost. Um, get us up on the 16.2 pounds of boost is what we're seeing at the end of the run. But um, listen, that's an idea of what it goes like in the way of horsepower. Now we'll um, take it out for a road. Go for a drive now. A um, couple of things I should point out first. The, the other mods I've done inside here are things like custom short shifter, has a sport steering stool. I've got a set of three auto meter gauges across here, fuel pressure, oil pressure, volts, and I've got a boost and a shift light set up in here. Otherwise, um, this is a full leather interior car, um, and she's um, pretty much how I want it to be. So anyway, we'll go for a drive so you can see what it all goes like. 